Cats and TV. Hey everybody, Cats and TV, and today we are exploring the CZV from Arturia's V Collection. In the mid-1980s, Casio launched the CZ series, a line of professional but affordable synthesizers. The first was the CZ-101, released in 1984. By far and away the most popular of the line, it was a small polyphonic synth with four octaves of mini keys and even support for a guitar strap, turning it into a full-on keytar. These were followed up by three additional models, the CZ-5000 and 3000 with full-size keys, more polyphony, and a mod wheel. And finally, the CZ-1, which added multi-timbral capabilities as well as velocity and aftertouch. The heart of the CZ synthesizers was their phase distortion synthesis. Like the phase modulation, aka FM, of Yamaha's DX line and the wave shaping of earlier West Coast modular synthesis, phase distortion modified sounds by adding harmonics to simple sources rather than subtracting harmonics with filters. The oscillators were each controlled by three eight-point envelopes that went far beyond the typical ADSR envelopes of the time. Phase distortion is based on the original concept of wavetable synthesis. A sine wave is generated by sweeping through a single cycle table of sine wave points at a fixed rate. If one modifies the rate of the sweep through the table, aka the phase, we can reproduce more complex waveforms. To this end, we'll jump right into the CZV and open up the advanced page to demonstrate phase distortion synthesis. By default, the engine produces a sine wave. We currently have a sawtooth selected as the phase distortion wave. We can actually have two selected at once, but for now we're going to link them and only have one. By cranking up the DCW parameter, we can start to hear the phase distortion. The wave morphs back and forth between a sawtooth and sine. We can also use a square wave. Here we see the actual waveform morph between a sine and a square. The amount of phase distortion is controlled by the DCW parameter. We can also use an envelope to control DCW. Now one thing about Casio's phase distortion is that it sounds a lot like analog subtractive synthesizers. Indeed, if we use a resonant waveform as the phase distortion, we get something that sounds like a resonant filter sweep. By decoupling the two waveforms, we can set up two different phase distortions at once for a more complex wave. Okay, let's move back to the main view, which resembles the interface of the original CZ series. There are controls for selecting the two different lines or voices within a preset and how to modulate them. There are also four programmable macro controls for manipulating synthesizer characteristics at a high level and an arpeggiator because, hey, everybody needs a good arpeggiator now and then. Let's go ahead and try out some of the presets. <laughs> The CZ series is particularly good at brass sounds. Let's hear some more.
Let's open up the Advanced tab again and look at the Synthesizer engine in more detail. First thing we're going to do is switch to the default blank template. Alright, so we already looked at setting up a single phase distortion voice, but you can actually set up two voices, which are called lines in the CZ engine. The envelope page allows detailed looks at the pitch, amp, and DCW envelopes per voice. The modulation page has a standard modulation matrix as well as access to some additional modulation sources. And finally, there is a standard effects section. Let's go back to the synthesizer page and work with the DCW parameter again. We can also change the DCW parameter via its envelope and add as many segments as we want. Okay, let's set up line 1 to use two different waves at once. Notice that both waves in a single line share the same DCW envelope. Let's try setting up line 2 now. We can try some of the resonant waveforms for line 2. There we go. Of course, we have to crank up the actual DCW level or envelope. Okay, let's turn the Line 2 DCW off and switch to the modulation page. Here we're going to use the mod wheel. We'll turn off the default vibrato control and set it up to control Line 2's DCW parameter. We have several additional modulation sources available to us, including two LFOs, a sample and hold, and a combinant section similar to what we see in Arturia's pigment synthesizer. Let's use a combinant now. We're going to use LFO1 as our primary, and then we're going to set it up to do uh, multiplication as the operator, and then we'll use the sample and hold as the other operand. Let's turn it up a bit, and you can see that we actually have a more complex modulation source. Let's now use Combinant 1 to also control Line 2's DCW and see what happens. 
Okay, I'm now going to take the mod wheel off of line 2's DCW and use it to control the frequency of LFO1, which will then feed into our combinant. We can get more range by lowering the bass frequency of LFO1. Okay, now let's go to the effects section. There are four effects slots arranged one, two, three, and four in this pattern. Let's go to effects slot one and use the delay. Let's increase it a bit, add more feedback. All right, we can add a resonant filter in effects slot 2. This actually is a subtractive filter, and it's an addition to the synthesis engine. Finally, I'm going to add a compressor in slot 3. Give the sound a little bit more definition. That's actually really nice, but we have one more feature to show you. In addition to all the preset waveforms for the phase distortion synthesizer, you can create your own. Let's draw in a control point here, and as we increase the initial rate, you can see it becomes more sawtooth-like. We can draw more control points to get more original phase distortion waveforms. It's really trial and error to see what works well. We can use two custom phase distortion waveforms in each slot of the line. Let's tweak it a bit, and then let's also set up the DCW envelope. Let's add in line 2. Now this sound is pretty darn intense, but this is a good use for the ring modulation function, which allows you to have line 2 modulate the amplitude of line 1. You can even save your custom face distortion presets as we're doing here. You can then use them in other patches at a later time. Oh yeah!
To find out more about the Arturia CZV, please visit their website and check out the description below this video. Thanks for watching. Check out more at www.catsynth.com and please subscribe to CatSynth TV.